And good afternoon, everybody. This is Shannon Scott, the Bard of Bonaventure, coming to you from inside of uh, my workspace, the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful land of Bonaventure. Did I make you dizzy? Um, but it's such a lovely day out here, just wrapped a tour, of course, having fun storing a nice crowd, and I think we probably talked in the bluff. For 30 minutes after uh, the tour today which is always a good sign and also nice when they uh, give you tips too right but I was walking by this plot and I thought I would stop here and share some commentary on the photo plaque the ceramic photo plaque of Corbett H. Schumann he was born May 15 1896 he died November 8 1921 so yeah a young man what 25 years of age there um, and let's see, he's inscribed, Death's but a path that must be trod if, ooh, tough, tough, tough here, it's kind of unclear, um, if man would ever pass to God. Death but, death but is a path that must be trod if man would ever pass to God. That's beautiful. But the ceramic photo plaque adorned by, it looks like probably a weeping rose here, kind of pointing down towards uh, Corbett. I love that name. Every now and again, you see that old name, Corbett. Um, let's talk about the headstone first a little bit, because some of you know this already, some don't, but we see it's done up like the old baptismal font, kind of looks like an old bathtub. So yeah, they would have planted these with ivy vines to show the flow of water, flowers, etc. Um, but also we see that scrolled effect over what could be arguably like a headstone, like in a way, the scroll is covering the headstone, which we might offer up is the death marker. And the scroll though, is kind of like a twofer here, like in the medieval period, like instead of obituaries in a newspaper, uh, you would have found death notices tacked up on um, parchment paper inside of villages on a board. So they old obituary board. And so that it's sort of a uh, symbolic of that, um, the announcement of the death. But it's also kind of like the name is now written in the heavenly parchment. So like, uh, you know, St. Michael himself or whomever uh, has, you know, written Corbett's name in the heavenly book. Um, interesting detail here on the side, which is a stylized acanthus leaf. Um, so that goes back to Roman times, easily the acanthus leaf. But we're really here to talk about, ooh, ooh, this is kind of a neat detail. Look at this. A little black heart uh, in the plot itself. That's really interesting. Um, oh, <laughs> it's got a spectac spectacular um, beaded um, O on it. That's interesting. Hmm, left by a mystery person. Okay, but the ceramic photo plaque. Um, these were first popularized uh, in France in 1851, I believe is the date. And then, of course, caught traction, and many studio shops produced them worldwide. Uh, this one is interesting because it's got like what looks to be a copper metal backing, which may have been a part of the process, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, that would make sense too, maybe. Um, but they would take the photograph, you know, that someone already possessed, and they would put it on. Uh, this may be metal backing here. That's how maybe they were made. I'm unfamiliar with some of the process, but um, sadly these were the targets of vandals and um, also weathering. In this case, it looks like someone intentionally damaged it. You can tell from like someone shot it actually. I mean, that's sad, isn't it? I mean, that to me looks like a bullet hole kind of indention, maybe one there too. So yeah, some idiot decided they would be... Uh, playful and destroy this beautiful, beautiful piece of art. But we still see the lovely suit he's wearing, that gorgeous tie and the real details of that face. But the point is this, um, most people in this period, uh, well, maybe not so much early 20th century, but you know, at one time, a lot of people didn't own a photograph of the person they loved, you know, photography was time consuming. It was expensive. Um, but yeah, not everyone had a photograph of the person they loved. So when you came to the grave of the loved one and you saw their face again emblazoned, no doubt that was very, very touching for you. And of course, let's face it, they stayed that same age inside of the photograph. Um, so yeah, I, I'm hoping one day to have a ceramic photo plaque on my gravestone. But I'm going to show like 
my best years. <laughs> um, all the same, you don't find too many leftover from the Victorian period. Every now and again, you find a beauty. This one obviously is uh, early 20th century, but it still has that kind of vibe, uh, the Victorian age. And a lot of the other details of the, of the monument do as well. But gang, that's a little bit about the photo plaque. Um, you know, I think they're really, really special and um, they really deserve to be uh, treated with respect, obviously. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, this is Shannon Scott signing out from Bonaventure. Come check me out. Remember, it's Bonaventure Cemetery Journeys, not tours, but journeys. A lot of people can give you a tour of the cemetery, but can they really take you on a story journey? That's what I do and my fellow storytellers do. So check us out at BonaventureCemetery.com, ShannonScott.com, and we look forward to uh, walking around in Bonaventure or some other interesting place with you again soon.